Hello, this is part 2 of the lecture for Quantum Physics 2. For this session, the phenomenon known as line spectra will be presented. We're going to learn about absorption and emission line spectra and how these provide evidence that photons are absorbed or emitted at discrete or quantized frequencies. And this is consistent with the theory that atoms and molecules can only have certain discrete or quantized values as presented to you in part one. To start off, let's look at the meaning of the word spectra. Spectra is the plural form of the word spectrum, which means a band of colors. An example of a spectrum is a rainbow. A rainbow is a continuous spectrum. One way to obtain a spectrum is to split light spatially into the components that it has, in the components of frequency or wavelength, or in layman terms, colors. This can be done using a prism or a diffraction grating. If you recall, that you that what you have learned in the topic of superposition for a diffraction grating different wavelengths will be diffracted at different angle so when you pass light from a light bulb or if you pass sunlight through a diffraction grating it will be separated spatially and to form a continuous spectrum it is a continuous spectrum because light from the sun contains a continuous range of frequency or wavelengths. So what you get is a band of rainbow colors. But what if there is a phenomenon that will provide not a continuous spectrum but only a few discrete wavelengths? What will this prove? This phenomenon is known as line spectra. There are two types of line spectra, emission line spectra and absorption line spectra. So let's look at emission line spectra first. So emission line spectra consists not of a continuous uh, band of colors, but rather a set of colored lines of definite wavelength on the dark background. So if you see from the diagram on the right, if you have a normal light bulb and if the light from this light bulb is passed through a slit, what you get is a continuous band, a spectrum, a continuous spectrum. But if you have a special type of lamp and light from this special lamp is passed through a slit, what you get is not a continuous spectrum, but rather certain lines of certain wavelength on a dark background. So let's look at what happens in this type of special lamp. These type of special lamps are called discharge lamps or discharge tube. Inside the discharge tube, there, are, there is gas at low pressure. This is because at low pressure, we can analyze the energy levels of individual atoms. So firstly, this discharge tube must uh, be the gases the gas in the discharge tube must be excited and this is done using electricity what this means is that there will be free electrons emitted at the cathode and using a high voltage it, these electrons are excited such that it is it can collide with the atom of the gas and as you can see on page uh, point 11 and on page 5 of your lecture notes, okay, the, this is exciting the atom by collision. So when this happens, the atom gains energy and it moves to a higher energy level. So when at a higher energy level, it's not stable, it's unstable. And when this atom de-excites back to the ground state, you will have to give off energy. 
and it this and this energy is in the form of light a photon so this is how a discharge tube works it is a, it is the same uh, principle as what you see in neon lights the brightly colored neon lights on signposts on signboards is an example of a discharge tube inside this neon light the gas is of course neon so if you have a discharge tube for example if you look at the diagram on on the left if you have a discharge tube that contains hydrogen then if the light coming up from this hydrogen discharge tube is passed through a slit and then through a prism then the light will be split according to the colors that the light contains this uh, will split according to the colors that the light contains so depending on the wavelength the prism will split the light to different angles so on the screen where the position of the light will depend on the wavelength so what you see is a dark background and only certain light correspond to the certain colors correspond to the corresponding wavelength will be seen so emission line spectra consists of certain colors on the dark background each of these lines corresponds to a particular wavelength or color. The, it, is, it appears as a line because of the slit that is, was used in the setup. Okay. The important thing to take note is that this, this, uh, what you see on the screen for a setup like this is not a continuous band, but rather only certain colors are seen. And this uh, color lines are characteristics of the element inside the discharge tube so for example if instead of hydrogen it is mercury you will obtain the line spectra for mercury or in at the bottom here you will see the line spectra for strontium so the key understanding is that because the spectral lines are well defined and separated from each other as opposed to being continuous it shows that the frequency can only take the frequency of these colors can only take certain values and because the frequency is dependent on the energy levels of the atom therefore it provides evidence that within the atom the energy levels are also quantized that it can only take certain values next we talk about absorption line spectra so in terms of appearance Absorption line spectra consists of uh, instead of a dark background, it contains a continuous colored background. And instead of the lines that you see in emission line spectra, an absorption line spectra will consist of dark lines on a continuous colored background. How do you get an absorption line spectra? The setup is slightly different. In the first place, instead of a discharge tube, you use a normal bulb which contains white light, which means it contains a continuous range of wavelength and is passed through the gas at low temperature. And uh, so that the atoms in this um, gas is at the ground state. Now photons, because the white light contains all different frequency, some of the photons which match exactly the energy levels will be absorbed. Those that do not absorb will pass straight through. Those that do not match exactly the energy levels will pass straight through. Again, please refer to point 11 on page 5. So those Photons which has not been absorbed will end up as the colored background. Those which absorb at the end of it will appear as missing lines, missing dark lines, missing colored lines, and that's why it appears as dark. 
Why is this so? Now, some of you may recall that when the atoms are excited, it will return back to its ground state, emitting the same frequency of photons. However, these emitted photons are emitted in all directions. Therefore, in the original direction of the straight through where the screen is, the intensity in this original direction will be very, very low relative to other photons that are not absorbed. So consequently, what you see are the colored background due to photons not absorbed and the dark lines correspond to the low intensity light in this certain direction. So note that the emission and absorption line spectra should look similar if you use the same element in the gas, if, if, the, if the atoms in the gas is the same. So this is because emission and line spectra, emission and absorption line spectra involve the transition between the same energy levels. So for example, if in the emission line spectra, if a red line appears here, correspondingly, the dark lines where the red is supposed to be will appear as a dark line. So in that sense, the emission line spectra and the absorption line spectra are negative image of each other. So to summarize, there are two types of line spectra and you need to distinguish between them. For the emission line spectra, it consists of a set of colored lines of definite wavelength on a dark background. The absorption line spectra, in contrast, consists of a set of dark lines correspond to definite wavelength on a continuous colored background. And the fixed position of these spectral lines provide evidence that photons are only emitted and absorbed at discrete or quantized frequency. And this is consistent with the theory that the energy levels of atoms and molecules can only have certain discrete or quantized values. Thank you.